And why is having that creative lens important in every single piece we do? I think the one thing that you should think about is that it's not about you. I mean, if you really get deep into who you are and what you're meant to do, you realize that your purpose has nothing to do with you. Your purpose is something that's to be left behind to continue on after you're not here anymore. It's for you to start it and continue it. And some people, I'm just going to take the pressure off. Your purpose is to have an incredible child and raise that incredible child to become whatever they're supposed to be. And other people, it's for you to get on big stages and do big things and inspire the world. But sometimes it's really just inspiring one person. It's not about inspiring everybody or being famous. It's about how can you make a difference in one person to then create a ripple to hit waves on the other shore, wherever that is. Creativity is in business today. So Melanie, so excited to have you here. How are you today? Thank you so much for having me. I am super curious. I know as a speaker, entrepreneur, even when I first met you in DC, you've been an inspiration and I love the way how you empower others, but let, let's dig a little bit deeper into what that even means. So how did you even get interested and be passionate about wanting to help other people find their voice and tap into their stories? And what does that even mean for others who's like, I actually realized recently why I'm doing this. And it's been a struggle for the last three years. I had a branding agency for eight years before I started doing what I do now, which was about three and a half years ago. So it's been 11 years since I started my business and it's changed drastically. Like I literally shut down the branding agency and started doing this. But I mean, I've been helping people understand their voice and understand who they are since I was in college when I was doing websites for small businesses around the neighborhood and for the college that I worked for. And I was starting to realize that people weren't talking the way that they talk naturally and they don't say what they want to say naturally. They think, oh, well, I have to do it this way. And I was the type to like break out the boxes and go, I don't really think we should ever have to do anything one way. But it took me until probably two days ago <laughs> to really realize that to give other people permission to be themselves. Love that. Maybe Melanie and Monica, that makes sense. You guys are speakers, you guys are entrepreneurs, but I'm neither. Why should I even care? I don't really, I don't really know what I can share with the world and why should I, why do I even have to think about going deep about understanding? I'm already busy. I'm already yeah. busy in life. <laughs> exactly. Well, the stories that we share help other people. And one of the things that I talk about when I do public speaker training is it's not about you. And I say that a lot, like over and over and over again. If you get nervous before you get on stage, then you're focused on you, not the audience. Because your nervousness is your ego talking. And it's your nervousness is your ego going, no, they're going to hate you. They're going to say bad things about you. They're going to think that you don't know anything. The imposter syndrome kicks in. But if you walk on stage and you go, this is not about me, then you don't get nervous because you know it's not about you if you fully let that go. And it takes a long time and a ton of practice. And it's not just your ego talking. There's lots of other things. But it starts with your ego. And it starts with, is this about me or am I helping other people? So when you're having a coffee conversation with someone and you're just sitting there chatting and you share part of your story about having breast cancer or having a divorce or losing your house or not having any more income, you start having the conversation with someone and allowing them and giving them permission to go, oh, I'm allowed to do this too. That's, that's so powerful. So what I'm hearing is that the actual barrier might be that is the intention in itself. Mm -hmm. So hmm, that's, that's such a good point. So then tying to that for those, I think it, even for me, um, the question of when is always a concern. So, okay, yes, I can, I have all these amazing stories. I understand why I need to share and how it could be empowering. I also, I must, I, you know, I, whether it's from like movies or to personal stories, I love stories too, but you know, some, Sometimes uh, somebody might overshare things and it gets a little uncomfortable or, or sometimes, you know, we see people sharing things online and it's like that seems a little inappropriate. Like, is there ever a point of like, we have the wrong timing or like, well, it's to each that. his own. Like, it's not something that can be like a, well, you have, if you're going to do this, then don't do that. Like that kind of a thing. But it's each of us understanding what our own boundaries are and our own barriers are. So a lot of times we have all of our boundaries are here when we, they need to be like out here so that we can be like, well, I'm going to share some of it, but I'm not going to try. I'm not going to go too far. And I know what my boundaries look like and I know what makes me feel safe but also that I'm also being vulnerable, which is, that's the, that's the touchy point. Like you're gonna share something with someone that they're gonna not like, and that has to be okay. And that goes back to 
not everyone's going to like you <laughs> and that's okay like you don't have to actually you really don't want everyone to like you you want people to love you or not like you at all like you don't want you want you want to push people's buttons to the point that they're like oh that was uncomfortable i'm not sure i really like that neither they can make a decision to say i'm not interested or they can say i am very interested i want to keep going with this and you're going to hit people in different parts of their path so like Someone who didn't like you five years ago will probably love what you're saying now because they've done the work to get to the point that they can hear what you have to say. But if you're thinking about your own boundaries, like I have specific boundaries. I have, I will share certain things about my life, but I'm not going to go past a certain point because I don't need you to know what's happening right now in every little detail of my life. But a lot of people think that they're like, well, you have your whole life out there. And I'm like, oh, if you even knew. I'm being vulnerable enough to share the things that I know I can share because I've worked through them already. A lot of people will put stuff out on the internet and Brene Brown, I think was one of the people who said this. She said, never ever work on something that you haven't worked on in private, in public. Like don't get on a stage and start talking through something that you haven't done therapy for or conversations with the right people about. If you haven't cleared something up with someone, do not talk about them on stage. But that also includes the stage of social media. That includes the stage of having conversations with a friend. You don't go to other people to talk about something that hasn't been resolved until it's been resolved and you're at peace with it. Otherwise, you're going to sit there and start crying. People will feel pity for you. You're going to sound like you're a rageaholic. Like it's all the negativity that goes with it. And that's where most people get into that like weird space of, yeah, but how much can I share and what's, what's able to be shared? And what if I get too vulnerable? you have your own boundaries and it's setting up those invisible borders that allow you to go, I'm okay with this, but I'm not okay with this. And I keep pushing mine. Like mine are getting further and further out. So the more I do stuff, the more I share and the more people know I have been divorced. I have lost a house. I have been through basically anything other humans have been through, but a lot of people didn't know that for a long time because it was too hard for me to share. Now I can share it. So love that. Love that. And that ties to a quote that I've been thinking a lot about for today's conversation, which is by Oscar Wilde. This is one of my favorite. I have it actually in my Gmail signature line, which is to define is to limit. Mm, amen. <laughs> something as simple as that often, uh, whether it's our job title, e either actually even for speakers, their speaker title, we define and limit. But uh, and we forget that. Who is this actually for? Yeah. Um, and so thank you, Melanie, so, so much for leaving such positivity and gems of wisdom. I know we will continue to learn that creativity is in business. I'd like to pick Teal 3. Well, I saw a need in the market and decided to not pivot, but give a new perspective on my public speaking training. And when was the last time you ate something new and what was it? I don't eat a lot of new things because I'm always like, I have such a huge palette of different kinds of things that I like. But the other day I had my first um, Impossible Burger, which is kind of amazing. So for those who have joined us before, we always like to think about how do we do that differently? Everyone has to be on Zoom calls. and. <laughs> You see a lot of stuff that shouldn't be on Zoom calls.